Okay. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Um, I gave Christina permission to record, so that way if anybody couldn't get on and they still want to see, they can come back a little bit later. Hello, everybody. Hi, Raquel. Hi, Bethany. I already said hi to Camille and Leslie and Oakley and TJ. And then we've got um, Christina and somebody that's on an iPhone. So they're mysterious. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> okay, you guys, so sorry that it took us 20 minutes to get started. But we'll get, we'll knock this out. First thing I need you to do. Oh, hi, Becky. Yay, hi, Becky. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do today. First things first, you're gonna drop in the chat the goals that you had set for yourself last week that, um, that and how you did on them like hold yourself accountable so what was your goal how many did you guys do the reels thing where you found three sounds three fun sounds made the reels for those sounds and posted the three reels um did you reach out to people ask them to get color matched i need you guys to blow up the chat right now drop every, all your information in the chat and then you all need to look at tj because she's glowing extra something special today and it's blowing my mind <laughs> I'm just going to keep toggling back and forth until I see TJ's face constantly because my goodness, whew, I might be getting lesbian feelings. I don't know. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Just tell my husband. Okay. I swear everybody on my, my, my stair team might my say she's going to think I'm a lesbian, but I, didn't do this all, but I promise I'm not. Make a reel about it. Maybe. Maybe I am. I don't know. Who knows? Do we know? We don't know. Okay. So drop your accountability in the chat. I'm going to read through those really quick. Let me open up the chat. Bum, bum, bum. Okay. All right. So Bethany, how did your TikTok go? How did it go on your holding yourself accountable? Um, yeah, I posted. I've done a TikTok every day and it's been pretty awesome so far. Like I've had, I've had one person ask me about the makeup and we, we chatted about it. So like, it's been good so far. Yay. That is, that is so freaking cool. Okay. Um, and then just a reminder is that we are doing, um, Oh, I'm so cold. It's hard for me to do this when I'm cold. Um, we are doing all of this with the with the goal that we are going to recruit two people to build our businesses over the next two months. So um, just doing that, I, it does not, I, how do I say this the right way? It's so important to have a goal that you're working towards. It's also super important to be committed to the process and, the, and being the type of person that gets to your goals. And it's far less about um, having the the payoff as a success, so being success driven. So to say, okay, well, I posted two reels, but I didn't get any sales from it, so I'm a loser. I quit. You know, we're not having that mentality. Instead, we're having the mentality of the big goal is to recruit two people to build my business using the power of two. The, the process is to commit to the process every single week and become the type of person who builds their business on a consistent basis. So again, just that tweak, the intentionality of recruiting two people is to look for opportunities to open your mouth about the artist program. So A, we got our bonus checks a day early today. It is, I, you're gonna see me say, oh my gosh, what a fun surprise to get your bonus check a day early. Usually it's on the 10th of the month because it's on the Saturday, we got paid today on the 9th. Such a fun surprise to get your bonus check. Another thing is that as an artist, you have this right now. We have this sisterhood, this of support, um, this, help desk style of coaching where you get to come on here and get coached. That's so cool. You're connected to your community of artists. So taking screenshots, taking a picture of this Zoom call, posting it, um, doing a reel about like if you, not a reel, a TikTok. So like if you're a TikTok person, tell your story. Um, do that challenge that Jackie just did of the Will Smith thing about your day. Like what you do when you first wake up in the morning? What are you drinking? Like I'm thinking of Camille and her coffee that she's posting every morning. Like you can take all those bits and pieces. Like Camille's would be like, wake up in the morning, wash my hair, check for grow out, um, drink my coffee, go do yard work. I don't know. And then do all the afternoon stuff. And then just like your, your day to day. 
And part of it can be a work meeting. And so you have this Zoom footage. So if you wanna do that, that's an, an excellent thing to tell your story and incorporate the artist program into that story. Um, so if everyone wants to smile real cute in case anybody wants to do that, <laughs> that way no one's like this on the thing. Everyone's smiling really cute for the thing is we're so cute. Okay, if someone takes one, will you tag me? Cause I am just gonna keep moving on. Okay. Then what we're going to do is we're going to talk about belief. Um, you guys, I, okay, so we are, we've been working on the model, right? And that's what we're going to do every single week. So if you're sick of it, too bad, it's worth the work. Um, the whole point of us meeting on a weekly basis is we are knee deep in our 61 day power of two challenge that incorporates meeting here on a weekly basis to work on our mindset and belief work. And then we are committing to holding ourselves accountable to the actions that will help us reach our goals. Um, the two hand in hand will help your business grow. And then by the end of May, if you have recruited two people and helped them get their first um, six, to reach 640 CV to reach artist two, then you will get a tumbler in the mail that has the Roman numeral, numerals, numerals two on it, okay? So that's a little rundown. That's why we're here. I'm gonna say that every time too, in case it's your first time here and you're wondering what the heck we're doing here. Um, but the bulk of what this meeting is going to be is us working on our mindset. So I want to know, I want somebody to just come off of mute and just share what is one thing that you struggled with this past week? Like what has been a struggle? I will. I knew it. <laughs> I can always count on Susie. She will. She will not leave me hanging in a in a lull. No way. I the struggle bus so much. No. Um, no. <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, mine was, but I think mine had to do with not really understanding my target audience because I did the 30 day real thing where I niched down, and I did it in particular about being an autism mom. And, and what I found was either. I'm not sure exactly what didn't happen, but it didn't have the outreach that I thought it would. And I thought, okay, this is a, and I think part of it was that it didn't feel authentic for me because I'm an autism mom, but I'm not in the trenches as much like as young autism moms anymore because my kid's grown. I'm really more in like empty nester, still have kids at home, but, but empty nester kind of thing. And so when I really dug deep and figured out my target audience, now it's like, well, crap. Now I, 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 it's almost like starting all over again. It's like, oh my gosh, I need real ideas. And so I've been scrolling through just trying to like jog my brain and get ideas, but I'm having trouble coming up with ideas of something that I can post to make mine, but the ideas. I love it. Thank you, Susie, for sharing that. And did you see Leslie shared in the chat um, that she's losing her mind over her bio? Okay, it's very similar struggle. It's a very similar struggle. And I'm so happy today because I have something to share. <laughs> like Susie, you, everyone's gonna swear that I Venmoed you 20 bucks to, to set me up like that. Cause you're like, <laughs> you're like, here you joke, we just can't go. <laughs> All right, you guys, I have not been able to stop thinking about this this week, because I don't know if you guys heard, but one of my, my videos got picked up and it's all over. It, I've got family sending me articles that are written in Russian of my, my video that I made. It's 7 million views. It's crazy. It's insane. Like, I honestly can't even wrap my mind around it. I Heart Radio just did an article about it too. Like, it's it's crazy. Someone needs to call Ellen. Like, put me on Ellen. I'm ready. Let's go. Um, but what, what was I going to say? Oh, Jackie was telling me, though, that she had another artist on her team that actually had a, a, a reel that she did that had 15 million views on it but she only gained 200 followers from it. 
And I, that's all I know. I don't know who it was. I don't know what her bio looked like. I don't know what her niche was. I don't know what her platform was. And that doesn't matter. What matters is that you connect with people. And I know that that's what gives you stress is because you're like, well, I have to connect with people. So I have to have like my cute little story so that people know me in, in 10 seconds or less, they know me. And that's a lot of pressure to put on yourself. It's like having to decide whether or not you want to marry someone on the first date, which is funny because on mine and my husband's first date, we decided we were going to get married, but that's beside the point. Most of the time you can't do that. And so this has been on my mind, seriously, nonstop. Because Susie, do you remember back in December when I did 30 days of miscarriage reels? Did that make me go viral? No. Did it give me a humongous following? No. And then I switched to farming. Did that give me a humongous following? No, did nothing. None of it did. And, and it's so crazy to look back. And I am so happy that I was in the trenches and went through all of that process. I am so glad that my miscarriage content is on my account. And you'll be glad that your autism mom stuff is on your account because it is a piece of who you are. And I, and I get what you're saying that it's not you right now. Totally get that. I get that. I'm not in having miscarriages anymore. That is a past part of my life. But if someone were to reach out to me and ask me a question about miscarriages, I could still help them. If an autism mom reached out to you, you could still help her. And, and so I, I, my message that I want to share with you guys is that I'm so glad that I went through all the things. And in two years, I'll look back at this and be like, I'm glad I went through that process. That, that is a part of who I am. And I wouldn't have figured out who I was if I hadn't gone through it. Cause I didn't know. I, I didn't, I could not have shown up confidently as myself a year ago, not, not, not in this capacity, not with this level of confidence because I hadn't gotten started yet. There's so many times, guys, so many times we try to think that we have to be confident in who we are. We have to be confident in our bio before we can feel confident. Tell me guys, that, riddle me this, how do you feel confident when confidence is, is based on experience, how do you feel confident getting started? You can't feel confident when you require experience. Like your confidence can't come from experience. It can't. Your confidence cannot come from experience. Your confidence has to be manufactured by you before you get experience. If you wait till you have experience, you'll never do anything. Okay, so here's the thing. This morning, and I shared with this with a couple of you guys this morning, is that I had always watched Jackie and Kat and everybody else who had a larger Instagram following. Guys, I remember following Kat when she legit had zero followers on Instagram. She started with zero followers on Instagram when she started saying. She maybe had like 60 or something. Um, and I watched them skyrocket and in my mind, I always have a story and I'm like, well, that works for them for X, Y, Z. It doesn't matter what I filled in the blank with. And I know that there's going to be a lot of girls on our team that say, well, Jessica had one video go viral. So that's why she like, that's why, that's why. And that can't be me. And so, and then you make up an additional story. Then you make up an additional story that says that, oh, well, it's easy for her to feel confident because she has that following now and she only got that following for that reason so it could never be me okay it's bananas and guys I have the biggest dose of imposter syndrome in the world right now it's written on the piece of paper okay that is how I feel right now I feel like an imposter so the thing is, all of us on this, on this Zoom call are trying to grow our impact on Instagram or TikTok. So it's all video based. Um, and my thoughts, my current thoughts that I have right now is that all those followers that follow me because they found that funny video will not choose to stay because I don't always share funny videos. I'm sharing about farming. I'm sharing about my life. So now, now they might choose to leave. So what's worse, 
people choosing not to follow you from the get-go and you don't even know that they didn't click follow or the ones who were following you see who you really are and then choose to leave when you have to see the numbers go back down riddle me which one's scarier i'll tell you which one's scarier oh my gosh now now people really can't get on is christina still here i see this is um yeah oh and she's recording still okay okay christina i don't know i don't know but i see that you're recording so i'm going to keep going and i realized this morning that had you asked me six months ago and how it would how i would feel showing up on my stories having twelve thousand followers i would have told you oh dude i'll feel like a boss like a total boss this morning i woke up to do my first makeup Instagram stories, and I have never been more scared to do makeup stories on my Instagram stories, never, because I thought they're all gonna leave. Everybody's gonna leave. <laughs> Everybody's gonna leave. And then I thought, holy crap, Jessica, don't be a hypocrite, okay? Let's, let's break this down, like take a look at it. Do some serious mindset work right now before you hit record, because it's important. Guys, I, we are always, you and me, we are always, at a crossroads and you can choose to hold your thoughts accountable or you can choose to let them rule how you feel. So I wrote it down. I said, okay, well, I'm, I'm not done growing on Instagram. I will always be trying to grow my impact. That will never stop. And so I thought, what thoughts am I having right now? My current thought process is these people won't choose to stay. This is a fluke. I just had one weird random thing that I thought I was funny blow up. A bunch of key people came to follow me. I didn't earn that. I don't deserve that. And it's a fluke. And I, I'm an imposter and they don't really like me and they're probably all going to leave. That's my current, that was my current, it kind of is. That's my current belief right now. How do you think I'll feel when I show up and act on the A portion of that, the action part? I'm going to be trying to protect myself. That protection is going to be shown as showing up timidly on my stories, overthinking literally everything. And trust me, I did not overthink that real. I thought I was freaking hilarious. I was sitting on the toilet laughing my face off because I thought I was so freaking funny. And I didn't care what anybody thought. Like I just did it. Who cares? Okay. So then I thought, I have to change this thought process. I have to change this thought process. And so Susie and Leslie, like what you guys are saying, that you're beating yourself up about it, that's what you're doing. You're overthinking who you are. And I'm, I'm going to encourage you to lean all the way into who you are and just find your people. So I literally had to get out a piece of paper and I had to say, okay, what do I change these thoughts to? Because I feel like an imposter. I feel like I am a fake right now. And so I had to just write this. And it feels like so, woo, this is how it feels inside writing this new thought process. But I have to train my brain to think this way. I had to train my thoughts to people actually really like me. I attract engaging people. I can be 100% me and find my people. And I have to be okay with letting the people go that do leave because the circumstances, people probably actually will leave, but that's okay because the people who stay really like me and it's so much better. It is so much better to have a, a, like a cult following almost of people who love me and get me and they're my people than to have a bunch of people following a watered down version of me. Because if things get real, who's going to stay? And so I had to like say this to myself 50 times this morning before I hit go. And you know what, guys? I didn't show up as confident as I could on my, if you go watch my makeup stories, it's not my best work. And that's okay. Like after I went, I'm like, maybe I should delete those. That's not my best work. I know that I've shown up so much more confident in my stories before, but I need to have enough confidence in myself to know that I did the work it's not perfect and I'll have so many more opportunities. And if people can't handle me at my mediocre, then that's okay too. I'm not gonna put pressure on myself to razzle, dazzle, bedazzle everybody so that I'm doing a song and dance every moment of my life. Do you know how stressful that is? 
I'm not, I'm not committing to that. But what I can commit is to leaning into being all the way myself so that I show up confident and I find my people. So with your bio, Leslie and Susie, with finding who you are, I just want you to just be a hundred percent you just be you. And, and I was telling the, the wham yesterday to most everybody who watches my farm stories, like, dang, I'm going to cry again. I cried yesterday too. I don't know why it makes me cry. It shouldn't make me cry. But to everybody outside looking in the farm stuff probably seems like, okay, cool. <laughs> like you bought a farm. I'm sure you wanted to do that. Go you like, that's cool. But that's not what it is to me. Growing up, my dad had told all of all six of us kids, we were not to grow up and be farmers. We had to go to college. He said that farming was a dying occupation. Don't pursue it. You got to do something else. So we did. Every single one of his kids has a college degree. And so I, I ran back into my husband in college when we were both at Arizona State. And I thought, you know, I realized at that point, I thought, you know, most people don't get to grow up on a farm. Like I loved it so much, it, so much. And, but most people don't like, it, it's a privilege. Like if that's what you like, it's a privilege. Anyway, so I kind of buried that part of my life. My dad had told me I needed to, I fell in love with the city boy. I couldn't keep holding on to that life and still be happy with my current life. Like I had to just uh, like be happy where I was at and I was fine. I was happy. So to be able to start this farm, like to have those cattle delivered yesterday, it's not, it's not just that it's like this, this ultimate dream. Okay. So the reason I'm telling you this is that as I share it, it feels like a very, very vulnerable piece of my life because it's almost like, this is my baby. Like, this is something that means so much to me. Do you like it too? Like we've invited friends down to have cookouts at the farm and everything. And every time they come, I'm like, this is my farm. Like, do you like it? <laughs> and it's scary. It is so scary. And so like, I get that as you're, as you're finding those pieces of you, cause you'll have the same thing. You'll have like something that you're super proud of. Like, that you redecorated something or that you did a, a really, you made cookies really good. Like Kelly Marie on our team is fabulous at making cakes. And I know that when she puts her whole heart and soul into something and then to share it and be like, do you like it? Like, this is, this is, I'm really proud of this. Are you proud of it too? That crap is scary. And, but that's the crap that people connect with you on. And I, and I have loved Oh my gosh, I wish I could just like have you experience a piece of it, but the, and I want you guys to experience and you can experience it, but really find those things that make you, you, that make you a hundred percent you and then share it. And it's scary and it should be. And that's how people really, really connect with you. You want to date people online with these videos. Um, and just, I, I keep saying lean all the way in and I, and I just keep imagining it like, like where there's a, when you're trying to protect yourself, you're like keeping everybody at arm's length. You're not really engaging in conversations with people. You're not like sending them voice messages to be like, oh my gosh, thank you for sharing my stories. Cause then you'll, you feel like you're going to be too much. Um, but I sent a bunch of people voice messages yesterday that are brand new followers to me. They just reacted to my stories and I messaged them back like something funny. And I thought, this is ridiculous. Like, why am I sending them a voice message just for, you know, commenting on a story? And so many of them sent voice messages back and they like, they were so happy to have made a new friend. One girl was like, how cool that you sent me a voice message. And it's because I'm like swimming in the pool with these people. I'm like, we're friends now. <laughs> hey, everybody, we're friends. Like they, 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 they came this far. It's like on, uh, on Hitch. Have you guys all watched the movie Hitch where he's like, is it 85, 10 or is it 90, 10 or 85, 15, 90, 10, you know, when he's teaching them how to kiss, he's like, you got to lean in. Like these people are leaning in. You got to meet them the rest of the way. Like you're dating, like you're dating a bunch of people online. <laughs> um, okay. So let's. Sorry, I totally went off on a major big time tangent and I'm sorry, but I think it's important because 
you're doing, you, you're probably doing this and you probably don't even realize that you're doing it because you're so much in your head. I really want you to try really hard to take a step out of your head and say, okay, I, because I used to think I was a pretty confident person too, but you can see the change. If you go look at Kimberly Burnett on our team, um, she just hit artist ambassador last month, but I was, I was, I pulled up Instagram and she was the number one post that I saw like right at the top. Cause guys, I don't usually scroll through Instagram, but I, I opened up Instagram. She was right at the top and I said, Whoa, she looks so confident. Like something had snapped in her. You can see it. You can see when people start to show up with a hundred percent confidence. And it's the coolest thing ever. If you go look at, um, Morgan Baldwin, um, she's on Jackie's team. She does like uh, body positivity stuff on Instagram. If you scroll back two years and look at her stuff, like she looks beautiful and she's had no work done, like zero work done on her. But there is like night and day difference. And it's all the confidence. Like that's the only change that has happened from two years ago to now. And it's because she owned who she was. She's not taking a selfie, like sucking it in and like, posturing herself and like trying to have the perfect smile. Like she's just like owning it. Like this is who I am. And I was talking to a friend yesterday about this. And I said, it's funny that I'm just realizing this now that people love you so much more when they can tell that you're being you, because I'm actually friends with some pretty crappy people. Like they're not the best people, but you know what? They own who they are and I love them for it. Like you, and you've been around those people that they like try so hard to be like the, like, pr like proper and say the right thing. And you almost feel uneasy around them because you're trying to watch yourself because you can tell that they're like trying to read you and like balance what they're going to say off of you. But when you're around someone who's, you know, just like they're, they're just themselves, like they've owned who they are. You feel so much more comfortable around them. So I challenge you guys. Um, no, it's true. Leslie, have you guys ever been around? Like, and you guys know I'm a big time church person. So like, I'm all about like, <laughs> it's not about try, like trying to be a good person or being a crappy person, but I honestly would rather hang out with someone who is like, totally like not religious at all, but has owned who they are a hundred percent rather than someone who is trying so hard to be perfect that you don't even know who they really are. I want to be the person who is a hundred percent who she is. And I want you to be a hundred percent the person who you are. Um, okay. I'm like, I'm just, I need to like take a gentle step down off this soapbox and let you guys talk. Is that helpful? Like as you're, as you're leaning into your bio and, and finding out who you are and your niche, is that helpful or what, what are your thoughts now that you're having on that? I'm so sorry. That was a really long tirade. That was well, you, have, you have totally rocked my world. This is the best Zoom ever. <laughs> oh, thank you, Bethany. <laughs> it's like you preaching to me, girl. You speaking to my soul. <laughs> I mean, it, like I everything you were talking about just seriously spoke to me because that's the one thing. I, you know, worry about, and especially with trying to run on the TikTok platform, you know, my thing was, was, you know, after watching the training, I was like, okay, so I'm going to post a whole bunch of makeup photos, but then it's like what I was talking about last week. Like I'm goofy and crazy and I want to be able, you know, for people to see me for me, not just, you know, you heard it from the mouth of babes. <laughs> <laughs> wait what did he say what did he say I couldn't hear it all the way he said I get my goofy from her <laughs> <laughs> so cute it is what it is but but that's yeah I like I totally get that because I've tried you know doing the things like you're doing like you know I've got my own little small little farm going and you know I do stuff on like that Oh, yeah, we did get a new goat. We got a new goat. <laughs> oh, is it a baby or a big oh, goat? Well, no, apparently she's having babies and we didn't know <laughs> it. <laughs> so um, we're going from a goat family of four to I don't know how many now. 
Oh, baby goats are the cutest. They are the cutest. Yes. But, you know, I've done, I've done things about, you know, the little farm. I've done makeup. I've done, you know, the, the like lip syncing and all that kind of stuff and trying to hone down on who I am and, you know, relaying that to others, I think has been the hardest part because I will sit down and be like, what's my niche? Who, what am I? Who am I? You know, so I think that's been so everything you're saying, speaking to me. Okay, so can we? Okay, thank you. I super appreciate that. But I want to know so when you're, we need to be like fabulous storytellers. So I'm going to, the challenge that I'm going to give to you guys this week is over the next week, I need you to think of your story. So like, um, Bethany, let's do you. So you have a small farm. Um, why, why, why do you have one? Like, how long have you been married? Like, tell me your story in 15 seconds. Okay. Um, my husband and I have been married for almost 13 years this year. He is a, he was born and raised in the country. I am a city girl born and raised in the city. Never, you know, really. I mean, I had friends that lived out in the country, but not, you know, I've never done it. So for me, this is huge. Like this is me kind of living the dream. I've moved out in the country. I have this, you know, nice little house that we built on top of a beautiful hill and we're starting our farm and it's just it's my I feel like I'm living the dream living out here now okay <laughs> but that's an amazing movie. story right like yeah that's a story like like that that's a, a hallmark movie plot line that's, <laughs> that's it. I mean share that you know like you need to you need to share like the pieces that were like most shocking to you when you came from like a new because I if I tell you the truth like I tried to date a couple country boys and I couldn't do it because they'd be like trying to impress me with like the country stuff and I'm like yeah that's what you like I had one guy <laughs> it's actually an artist on our team's older brother <laughs> Brandy Brandy King's older brother I went on a date with him and he's a cowboy and he's like let's go feed the horses and I'm like okay cool so we go feed the horses and he thought I was gonna be real impressed I'm like okay we're done with our chores can we go get a soda now <laughs> but he wanted it to be this moment where I was like impressed with the horses and I'm like yeah that's chores can we go do something fun <laughs> But anyway, so it is a different perspective, like show the parts, like what attracted to you about your husband, like what was shocking, like be an amazing storyteller and think about like how Hallmark would, would make this into a storyline, like, but do it. Okay. I want to do another one. Who else, um, like wants to share, like not so much your niche, but we're, we're going to tell a story. And so over the next week, I want like that, the reel that I did. And you're going to see me do it today. I'm going to make a, my reel today that I'm going to do is going to be my whole story. Like I grew up on a farm, married a city boy, had a bunch of kids. My ultimate dream was to have a farm. And the last scene is going to be my cattle running out of the trailer from yesterday. It's a really good video. I'm really excited. <laughs> Let's do another one. I got one. I got one. It's a little weird. Okay. Oh, um, no. So. Me and my husband are 12 years apart. Um, so it's a pretty big age gap. And he was my ballroom coach in high school. So it, that's a very ballroom? Uh, ballroom? Yeah, ballroom dance. Ballroom dance. Yeah. So no way. I just feel like what high school did you go to that you had ballroom dancing classes? We had a ballroom team. It's in Lehigh High School, just like Utah County has them all over the place. Holy but, cow. I went to a I went to a redneck school, so we didn't have any of that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I was lucky to have algebra two at my high school. <laughs> okay, keep going. <laughs> Hi. Anyway, and so like I feel like that's kind of a weird story that I, I love tell. it I don't I love know it. So I want to know like because he's 12 years your senior he was your teacher like that could be some great content <laughs> I love it a lot that was good I think that's good thanks for saying whatever you how, said I don't how remember. did you guys well now I want to know how did you guys like start dating please tell me it wasn't when you were in high school and you're 12 years older no no no. So I graduated and then he took my senior pictures and I kind of, 
I, I mean, I was the, I was the, the ballroom captain or whatever. So I spent a lot of time with him in high school, but it was always at school functions. Very like. It was kosher. Good. Okay. But you were maybe like you. winking at it a little bit. <laughs> well, not even in high school. It was right after I graduated. Um, he asked me to help him with teach a couple things. And then he took my senior pictures and he actually at graduation, my mom asked him, are you dating my daughter? And he's like, no, he's like, even if I would, if, even if I would, the age difference is so different. I would need her to like make the first move and everything. So that he wasn't being like manipulating me or anything like that. Right. Right. I was the first one. I was the first one to say, I love you. Like it was, it had to all be on me because he didn't want to push me. Gotcha. So it was, I mean, I knew him for a while, but I didn't really think of him that way, but I don't know. We ended up dating for two years before we got engaged, but it was fun. But everybody. Well, Oakley, I just got to tell you, I scrolled through uh, the Zoom while you were telling that story and everybody had a big smile on their faces. Like people love stories. They love stories. So yeah, like work on that. I love it because people would just, they'll be able to connect with you in a new way. I didn't know that about you and I love knowing that. Okay, let's do one more. Who else has like just your story? Cause everybody has a story. Like I might have to share uh, my story about how me and my husband seriously hated each other when we first met each other. I didn't know that JN and I know you and I know your husband. <laughs> Wait, was he wasn't the basketball coach of the girls team, was he? Who was he coaching? No, he, was, he wasn't the basketball girls coach. Uh, he was the JV boys coach for Pima. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Yeah. That's funny. Did and you flirt with him? How old was he? How old was he? <laughs> um, twenty-one. He had just got back. To yeah, yeah, and you dog. <laughs> <laughs> I know, but yeah, we dated like my whole senior year. We got in trouble because someone said that we were dating, and. If you would have seen us, you would have never known because we never talked to each other. So I don't. That sounds like high school dating. That sounds like it sounds like small town gossip. It does. It does. <laughs> Guys, me and Jan went to the same high school. <laughs> we played on the same basketball team. I was a senior when she was a freshman. <laughs> oh, Jan, that's funny. Her husband is a really, really good guy. He comes from a really, really good family. Okay, you guys. What else? Who else? My stuff's all- yeah, Raquel, I know you can see me looking at you. <laughs> you can feel it. Did you guys see your face? I'm looking right at you. Unmute yourself, fool. <laughs> uh, I'm a mess, and that's how my brain is right now. I'm like, I don't know. I don't, does this sound crazy? Like, I took the stupid NGogram test because I'm like, who are you, woman? Because I feel like I'm psycho. And I'm like five different people. And um, that's part, I love that about me. Honestly, it's not like, I'm not saying that is a bad thing. Wait, 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 wait. Haven't you seen, haven't you seen that reel that it's the Shania Twain song? It says, let's go girls. And the girls like me and all my personalities coming out to play every day. It's a, it's a trend. Get it. That's me. And so the, the stupid, I've taken, I've taken now, I think seven different and it can't figure me out. And I don't understand it because everybody. Okay, hold, hold on, I'm gonna I'm gonna send this to you. Hold on, hold on. Like you don't know how many people have asked me what injured like like even my hairstylist. She's like, I'm so curious to see what you are. It literally said it said that it couldn't pinpoint me. It can't pinpoint me. I'm taking seven. Oh, I it doesn't know what I am. <laughs> and so what I'm trying to like show up as myself. I am what we're saying I shouldn't be like, I need to niche down, whatever. I don't really know what that means because like one day I'm, I don't, I don't, I don't know. So that's my brain. And I have so many notes and I don't know my, what my bio is supposed to be. I don't know. I don't know anything. Well, hold on, hold on. Hey, Jessica, can I throw something in? Yeah. Um, because I was going to ask you about this anyway, because it's, I feel, it feels like it fits. I was, um, 
looking through some information on a on a from a coach and she said talking about your niche yeah is think of things that you could talk to somebody about for 20 minutes without using notes oh yeah that you could just talk about yeah and that's how you kind of niche down and that makes kind of sense to me because it's like well that's just like talking to your friends right right and i and i want to strangle raquel right now because I've hung out with her before and she did tell me for 20 minutes about how she met her husband because that's a story in and of itself yeah that's a straight scandal people would be like what he married you when you were he was 21 and you're only 16 I'm gonna get some heat on that but that's true yay, like, <laughs> yay, yay haters Woo! yay bring on the haters is that that's a uh, yeah that's that's one I need to do that I've been and then and then you can be like well it's okay because you'd be like I'm just this trophy wife and then show how he cooks dinner every night <laughs> yeah yeah he's he's my trophy that's for sure okay, the only thing that you guys need to do this week is to just be confident just <laughs> decide to be confident you have to because yeah yeah all right you guys let's see if I missed any in the chat real quick Okay. Oh, who said that? Wait, who's the iPhone that said that they, she met her husband online? Because that is amazing. Oh, they're muted. Okay. Online That's me, I Jessica. Oh, wait, it doesn't have a name. I can't see you. It's Becky. Oh, yeah. Be okay. Becky, you need to share that too. Like, seriously, the relationship stuff, people eat that up. Like, think about how many people watch The Bachelor. It's because they like to watch relationships and they like to see the nuances. Like, it's so fun to learn those stories. So even if you just start there, Guys, you're not married to one storyline until the end of time. You, this is, so, this is a living, your niche is a living, breathing thing. It's going to grow. It's going to mature. It's going to, seriously, it's going to morph with you. And that's okay. Like it's supposed to, and you're going to find your confidence as you go along. You just got to get started. You've got to get started. You've got to lean all the way in and know that you're going to look back and be like, yeah, I needed to tweak that. And Leah, I didn't say hi to you, but hi, I've been looking at you a lot this time. <laughs> all right, you guys, I'm going to hey, let you Jessica, go. Yes. I, I want to figure out how to incorporate the restoration of our like 130 year old house that we're doing right now. Oh, yes. In Holbrook. Yes. Yeah because okay. when we bought it oh my gosh nobody had lived there in 30 years and it was like living in a tent I believe it I told him I... that uh you better be glad I love you because my gosh <laughs> well have you seen have you seen the makeover videos and reels that stuff that people do I have not done that okay, that is my I... that's my new jump on that's why I'm listening to you guys because yes, that is my new yes, okay. my new so... go-to so go search in TikTok or Instagram and just do like, do all the words, like do remodel, um, house rehab, like look at, look at all of those hashtags and you can kind of brainstorm some ideas of how people show the process. And that's so nice is because sometimes we think, oh, well, we have to like make this fresh and new so people will be interested. But the nice thing is, is that you are going to make it unique to you because it's you, like you get to copy the process that somebody else did. So go watch those videos, go get some ideas. Um, yeah, but that's super exciting. That's that's a, an amazing story to tell. I love that. All right, you guys, my babysitter is leaving in two minutes, so I've got to hop off. Um, but hold yourselves accountable this week. Do the video, and I'll see you guys next Thursday. Bye.